the next talk in this session. So it's my great pleasure to introduce Nikolai Bjorner, who is a senior principal researcher at Microsoft Research Redmond. Uh, Nikolai is one of the lead authors of the state-of-the-art SMT solver Z3, which uh, has really has a revolutionary impact in broad areas in software engineering and security. Z3 was developed jointly with uh, Leonardo de Mora uh, and uh, Christoph Wintersteiger, and I believe more recently Lev McManson. Uh, for his work, Nikolai has won many awards. So along with Leonardo, he received the Herbrand Award at Cade. Uh, also, I believe he received a PLDI Award. Uh, I forget the exact, was it the kind of the impact award, uh, Nikolai? At PLDI, let's let's skip. Uh, okay, skip, skip all that. And uh, thank you again, Nikolai. And uh, he's going to give us a talk about Z3. Thank you, Nikolai. That, thank you. All right. So, um, in continuation of the uh, bootcamp uh, bootcamp uh, talks, um, I prepared a, a hopefully gentle introduction to SMT. Uh, and uh, since I develop an SMT solver, uh, some of the material is in, in based on, on using uh, set three, uh, but it aims to be of uh, general uh, purpose interest. And uh, it won't go into too much technical detail, uh, but uh, we can take such in, in maybe in conversations. Um, so the structure of, of this uh, talk is, First, I will go through SMT through the lens of CDL, uh, CDCL um, over theories. And uh, that connects um, both to Armin's and, and uh, Jakob's and Sam's uh, uh, renditions of, of uh, CDCL. Uh, so it builds over those. Uh, and uh, now in extension to uh, the pseudo Boolean uh, solvers uh, presented uh, yesterday. Uh, I will uh, go through a number of uh, SMT solvers. Um, first, for finite domains, then uh, various base theories and reducible theories. Uh, I will explain what I mean by these. Uh, and this is basically a taxonomy of how you can view uh, different uh, versions of SMT solvers. I'll finish off with some sneak peek on building uh, solvers on, on top of SMT. So, uh, so again, the lens is uh, viewing SMT solving as extensions of uh, SAT. Uh, now, what is SMT? Uh, in a nutshell, uh, the, the question is, you're giving a logical formula, say a first order logical formula, uh, typically, uh, we can assume that it, for starters, that it's quantifier free, uh, but but that's not a, uh, there's nothing uh, that that uh, requires uh, whether you are quantifiers or not, uh, and um, the uh, the query is whether the formula is satisfiable model or some background theory, and the SMT solvers have specialized algorithms for those background theories. Uh, so here's an example uh, SMT formula. It combines uh, three different theories. Uh, first of all, uh, it contains arithmetical symbols. So it says that if X plus two equals Y, then as the equation on the right-hand side of the implication holds. And uh, the second of all, it contains uh, interpreted functions select and store from the array theory. And uh, two of the re relevant axioms that uh, define the behavior of select and store uh, are given below. So if you select at an index uh, that you just stored at in the map, you get the value, uh, you re retrieve the value. Otherwise, if you select at a different key, uh, then you um, are retrieving values in the store uh, prior to the latest uh, update. Uh, finally, uh, there's an uninterpreted function uh, tagged onto the formula. Uh, so this, this formula is valid as can be proved uh, given that x, uh, y minus x plus two is, uh, is going to be uh, the same as three. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, y minus x plus one is going to be the same as three. Um, so one way of viewing uh, uh, SMT solvers in the landscape of sisters, brothers, and, and cousins 
is uh, it uh, aims to uh, bring e expressivity and the ability to uh, express uh, domain domains seen uh, typically in software development at their uh, level uh, abstraction level that you find there, uh, but then employs and steals and borrows techniques developed in the SAT, MIP, and CSP communities. Uh, so um, noteworthy with the SAT solvers is their uh, ability and, and their tuning to perform cheap local inferences and then uh, garbage collect uh, useless uh, clauses and um, the, the, um, the strong heuristics and methodologies for, for performing such uh, inferences is, is are, are retained in the uh, SMT world. On the other hand, when we solve uh, arithmetical formulas, uh, the, the inference mechanisms are uh, borrowed from MIP uh, technology. So we apply uh, linear programming and, and branch and bound and cuts. Uh, finally, uh, the, the CSP world uh, has uh, perfected the art of global propagators. And uh, similarly in the SNT uh, solvers, we apply global property gators when they are cheap and uh, narrow the search space. Um, so uh, in, in, uh, in highlights, uh, an SMT solver can be viewed as uh, engine, can be viewed as the uh, SAT component that does case analysis and then theory solvers that perform uh, theory reasoning. So the basic idea of such an integration can be illustrated uh, uh, here with a formula where you have uh, three clauses, uh, AX is greater than or equal to zero and Y equals X plus one. And then you have a disjunction that sets bounds at Y. Uh, the, the SAT solver will see a propositional abstraction of this formula. So the propositional abstractions are these propositional variables P1 to P4 and the SAT solver can then uh, solve such a formula at the uh, given the, the, that it knows about propositional logic, it may find a, a possible assignment uh, that says uh, P1, 2, and 4 to true and P3 to false. From the point of view of the theory solver, uh, it can consume a, uh, such an assignment and uh, in this uh, version, it, it then has a, a conjunction of linear equalities and inequalities, and it can then decide uh, satisfiability of such a conjunction. Now, this conjunction is unsatisfiable, and uh, the unsatisfiable core is, is really a combination of only three of the four uh, propositional assignments. Uh, so, uh, so we take the, the, the unsatisfiable core of the, uh, part, the assignment and uh, expose uh, as a new lemma to the uh, SAT solver uh, that um, then can uh, work with it. So the, the unsatisfiable core is also known as a theory conflict. So uh, now programmatically, uh, Here's a view of a, a SAT solver, uh, the main uh, elements of a SAT solver. So it, it uh, runs in, a, the, in the catechal loop. Um, it, it, um, it incrementally checks uh, whether you have inferred the empty clause and then uh, the, the state is unsatisfiable. If the state uh, is currently in the conflict, it, it performs uh, lemma learning and backtracking and back jumping. Uh, if all variables are signed, the, the state of the solver is satisfiable. Uh, otherwise, if it uh, is able to do a unit propagation, it performs unit propagation. Uh, and then it uh, has a state where it can uh, do uh, one of uh, several possible things, uh, simplify the global state, uh, perform a restart, uh, prune, uh, garbage collect, uh, or otherwise perform a, a new decision. Now, uh, what, what, uh, uh, when we add theory solvers, uh, we can uh, do this in a uh, fairly uh, 
incremental fashion on top of uh, the CDCL loop. Uh, so the, the main new additions for the th uh, adding a theory solver to SAT um, comprises of uh, making uh, th uh, assignments and propagations uh, theory aware. So the, the main, uh, the, the first thing to notice is on the bottom. So when we uh, choose a new variable uh, assignment to a Boolean variable, uh, it, uh, we, we inform the theory solver about this assignment. We can also ask the theory solver to form, perform unit propagation. Uh, it can even simplify formula, participate in garbage collection, uh, and, and, um, and there's a new, uh, a twist in the uh, final case where you don't have any uh, assignments. Um, it's uh, the cost of propagation is not uh, uniformly as cheap as you see in propositional satisfiability. So it makes sense to stage uh, propagation uh, in uh, when you integrate theories. Uh, so the, the main interface is that a, a theory solver then uh, should expose is essentially a, a set of uh, say call these callbacks that were in red in the previous uh, slide um, uh, together with one I didn't show which was uh, participating in the conflict analysis step so uh, when when a um, that's the last line so when this uh, theory solver assigns a, a boolean variable uh, by propagation it, it also um, accumulates an explanation for this uh, assignment. Um, so here's a different view of uh, the, the same uh, SAT loop uh, as uh, CDCL, and it gives a different way of uh, showing how uh, theory solvers uh, are, can, can be layered on top of SAT solving. Uh, so in this view, it's, it's a SAT as a rewrite system. Uh, there are two kinds of states. You have um, on the first line, the initial state, you have an empty set of assignments, so an empty model and a formula F. And then uh, you can take one of uh, several possible different transitions. You can uh, augment the partial assignment using a decision. So picking an unassigned literal and then add it to the decision stack, perform unit propagation, um, or um, then uh, if, if all uh, variables are signed, you know uh, that, that the formula is, is true uh, if, if you didn't get a conflict. Uh, and now the second uh, kind of state is when you have uh, a conflicting clause, so a clause that falls under the current assignment. Uh, and in this case, the CDCL solver engages in the dual role of building a partial proof. So instead of building a partial model, it builds a partial proof. Uh, so now the, 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 uh, the, the new thing with respect to theory solvers is uh, what uh, does, uh, how does this loop look, look uh, in context of theories? So first of all, propagation, uh, if uh, theories may decide that uh, or realize that some unassigned literal uh, has a um, is forced by the current partial assignment, so it can participate in in propagation. Uh, so there's these propagations are not justified by the clauses, but they're justified by uh, some uh, theory reasoning. Uh, a conflicting state, as we saw in the running example. Uh, can be a subset of the partial assignment uh, that's false under the theory. So in the running example, we had P1, P2, and P4. The conjunction of those uh, literals was unsatisfiable. So now that's the unsatisfiable state. And, and then uh, the, the solver engages in a, a way of, of resolving, so finding a new back jumping uh, point. Uh, uh, conflict resolution itself or conflict analysis, which is also known as, uh, also has a, a theory um, version. And this was illustrated in depth uh, during uh, Jakob's talk on, on uh, pseudo-Boolean formulas. And there are several analogies for other theories. Uh, so finally, um, you can uh, augment the decision phase 
uh, with um, having the theory solver give hints of which literals to pick for the, the next decisions and what polarity to assign them to. And, um, and as I said earlier, uh, the the resolution uh, phases were, was illustrated uh, well in the context of pseudo booleans. The the main questions now, uh, when you have multiple theory solvers, is then how you can uh, combine them. Uh, so first of all, the, these questions are: when you have two uh, theories, is the union of those theories consistent? And then mechanically, how to implement it? How do you create a solver? Uh, so given that you have solvers for uh, two the theory one and two, how do you create a th solver for the combination? Uh, so uh, just, just to uh, illustrate uh, what, what I mean by multiple theories. So the, the blue, red, and green uh, symbols come from three different theories. And we're aiming to, to create solvers for the combinations of these theories. The main theorem, uh, uh, that uh, SMT solvers are essentially built on is the nelson oppen theorem. And it uh, states that the, the union of two uh, consistent, so, so uh, satisfiable uh, sets of formulas from two different theories, assuming that they uh, don't share any uh, interpreted uh, symbols and that they're uh, models can be extended uh, with fresh elements without breaking uh, consistency. Uh, the union of those theories will be consistent. And the, the main um, uh, reason here is that you can create a homomorphism from, uh, from uh, between these uh, two, two models to, to create a, a new model. There are several generalizations that have been um, uh, developed uh, and, and you can view this nelson Arpin theorem as a special case of Robinson amalgamation. Um, and and uh, th there you, you generalize the, the point of having a shared theory being just the theory of equality uh, to uh, being able to have uh, theories that share more than just equality. Uh, so, now, uh, the, in terms of uh, mechanizing uh, the combination of theories uh, from a solver point of view, uh, the main ingredients the theory solvers uh, use for interacting uh, on equalities is to be uh, receive uh, states of what terms are equal in a given uh, state or and optionally, you can also they can also act on which terms are known to be distinct in a given state, and then for conflict resolution, uh, they then uh, also expose a method for explaining uh, why they propagated certain equalities. So, so the theories may be able to not only propagate uh, literals but also equalities between themselves. Uh, but when once they propagate an equality they're required also to uh, uh, retrieve explanations when you perform a conflict analysis. Uh, so that's the uh, delta on top of propositional uh, satisfiability uh, um, conflict analysis. Now, um, in, uh, when theories uh, are convex, meaning that they, uh, when they apply, when they imply some disjunction of equalities, they already imply one of the disjunctions. Uh, then uh, you can uh, typically uh, do efficient equality uh, combination by rewriting into normal forms. Now that's not always possible. Uh, not all theories are convex. For example, integer arithmetic is not convex. Uh, so uh, what one can do instead is to propagate equalities or share equalities uh, but apply various filters on those. So one uh, main filter that we use is to share only equalities uh, that were used to show that a given theory is consistent. Uh, so, uh, so in a nutshell, we extract a model, a candidate model for uh, theory I, the, um, say the theory of arithmetic. And in, if in that model, uh, two variables, two shared variables are equal, then we communicate 
uh, we share that equality. Otherwise, uh, we, are, we don't need to agree whether uh, those two variables are equal or distinct. Uh, and there are various other uh, stronger filters one can uh, develop uh, to, to minimize the, uh, the communication of equalities. And then finally, for uh, uh, theories where you don't have signature disjoint uh, 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 there, there are um, ways of, of uh, combining uh, uh, satisfiability as well. Now, um, this is in the second part, I will go through theories and, and solvers. And I'll follow this taxonomy of uh, Boolean based reducible hybrid and external theories. Uh, so uh, for the uh, Boolean finite domain theories, the main exemplars uh, are uh, bit vector theories. So here's an example of a bit vector formula um, that uh, encodes uh, the, abs uh, the absolute value uh, operator uh, using a bit uh, masking uh, techniques. And we can prove that the absolute, absolute uh, um, value operator is um, is implemented by this masking uh, technique by proving an identity over bit vectors. Uh, the uh, pseudo Boolean formulas is another uh, uh, class of Boolean constraints, uh, finite domains where you have enumeration types, uh, again, our, our finite domain. Uh, and um, and the, the, the previous talk introduced XORs as a Boolean finite domain theory where the operator XOR had a special uh, decision procedure as well. The two main uh, base theories uh, that are used uh, are arithmetic and uninterpreted functions. And in a nutshell, all other theories uh, reduce into those base theories. So they either reduce to arithmetic, uninterpreted functions, or they are finite domains and then handled by SAT. Uh, so uh, here's an example of an arithmetical formula. Uh, you have x squared than or equal to zero, and then uh, two other uh, clauses uh, with inequalities over x and y, and, and um, where x and y range over reals. And you can then uh, solve and find solutions to those uh, formulas. An example of uninterpreted function a uh, formula is where you have uh, a, a sort S. Uh, you, we don't say uh, what, what are the uh, size of the, how many elements the domain of S has. Uh, so it may have one element, two elements, or arbitrary number of elements. So that's part of what we solve for here. And then the uninterpreted function F is a unary from S to S, and we there's a constant X. Uh, so. In, in the the first constraint uh, has a solution um, where uh, f is identity function, and the uh, and it turns out that's the only possible solution because if we uh, solve for the second line where f is not the identity function, uh, that becomes unsatisfiable. And then uh, I'll go through the, the solving methods for for this theory. Now. Uh, other theories are, as I said, can be reduced to this base theory. Um, and a prolific example is the theory of arrays uh, that was used in the introductory example. Uh, so here's the example array formula. And um, in a nutshell, uh, what we do with array formulas is to compile them into by adding axioms from the theory of arrays until, uh, and, and this is the scary looking uh, possible augmentation of, of this the previous formula with added axioms. Uh, uh, so first of all, you, you essentially expand the select store axioms by, by saturating with respect to them. And, um, and then uh, for extensional arrays where you encode, uh, you enforce whether two arrays are equal, but if or not, if they have the same number, uh, the selects are equal. Uh, there, you can also expand that by introducing a, a scolum term for uh, the the equality between arrays. Called here, here it's called diff. But the main point here is that 
uh, several theories are re essentially reducible to the base theories. Uh, then there are hybrid theories that in, uh, combine uh, non-disjoint theories. Uh, and a, a important example here is the theory of strings and sequences. Uh, in in uh, this example, uh, we have uh, three strings, S, T, and U. Uh, and it says that if S is a prefix of T and U is a suffix of T, uh, but the lengths of S and U equals the length of T, then indeed T has to be the concatenation of S uh, with U. Uh, and finally, uh, an, a, a very important example of hybrid theories, quantifiers. Uh, finally, uh, constraints as code uh, is, um, I think a learning from the, the CSP world is that uh, it, it, we, we, in the s &T, we can encode theories with the signatures, uh, but it, it only goes uh, as far as uh, the, the theories uh, in, allow succinct encoding of the kinds of constraints you are uh, working with. So in, in this example, uh, with the comprehension of sums, we can write a constraint that when expanded into atomic formulas uh, becomes impractical to handle. Uh, and, um, but there's nothing that prevents s &T solvers to uh, contain ad hoc theories uh, by using uh, the same uh, callbacks for propagation and conflict uh, analysis as uh, used by the general purpose theories. Uh, so, uh, so here's an example that illustrates a code snippet that encodes the, the, const uh, the cardinality constraint uh, very uh, uh, directly. Um, uh, and, and, uh, and, and this can be useful in, in uh, combinatorial settings. So now I'll go over uh, selected solvers for these uh, uh, theories. Uh, and in, in one uh, basic example, I'll go through a solver that combines reasoning about finite domains, uninterpreted functions, and it in, indeed reduces to these base theories. So the solver is uh, for a um, theory of Unicode characters. So the domain of Unicode is a finite domain. It has uh, almost 200,000 elements. And it has, uh, all theories have the, the equality relation, but Unicode also has a less than or equal to relation. Uh, so the empirical uh, observation is that the less than or equal to relation is, is uh, used uh, fairly rarely. And the, the main operations that's used between characters is just equality. So this suggests that a engine that's based on union find for equality, plus a lazy reduction to some theory that can handle inequality is, um, has, is an advantage. So for handling inequalities, uh, there's different choices of, of ways you can embed to inequalities. You could use arithmetic or, or bit vectors. And it turns out the bit vector reduction uh, remain superior uh, in in the in the uh, evaluation uh, I've made at this point. So I'll present the version that reduces to bit vectors. Um, so for first of all to handle equalities, uh, it's handled by uh, union find algorithms. So if we uh, have a set of var uh, character variables a to t and uh, equality constraints between those variables. Union find will incrementally create uh, equivalence classes uh, of those uh, terms. And uh, once an equivalence class contains two distinct uh, nodes terms, uh, it has detected a conflict. On the other hand, uh, uh, character, you also have character constants. Uh, so in this example, E and T are, are constant characters. And um, we can perform the same uh, union find and uh, also detect uh, conflicts when an equivalence class contains two constant uh, characters um, that are distinct. So this gives a, a quick way of, of uh, reasoning about uh, just the pure theory of equalities. Uh, 
Now, when we use the uh, symbol of, of comparing uh, bit vector characters, uh, the reduction to bit vectors is essentially compiling uh, a, a circuit uh, for uh, the, the bit representation of characters. Uh, so it, it, uh, there's uh, 18 bits are required to represent uh, the domain of U. And, um, and now we can define a compilation of, of less than or equal into clauses uh, by, by walking the most significant bits downwards. Uh, and and uh, so for each uh, sub interval of, of comparison it corresponds to a new propositional variable that's uh, presented to the SAT solver. Uh, so now we have two views of, of theories. We have the equality view of characters and the bit blast view of characters. The, um, uh, so how, how can we combine them? So one way of combining them is to augment now the, the signature with uh, a, a function that uh, can call bridges between the um, theory of, of booleans uh, and, and you. So the, um, and the, uh, combina the way of combining them is, is for every character that, were, that gets bit blasted, introduce an equality that uh, says that the, uh, the bits of A, if you access these 18 bits of A uh, and convert that to a character, you get A back. And, um, and this uh, allows to align uh, the quality view with the bit blast view. And, and we only need to do this for characters that have been bit blasted. But to support this, we'll need uh, congruence closure. So he, here's an example of using congruence closure of uh, on two equalities. Um, and from these, uh, the first two equalities on the upper left, you can derive that x equals g uh, of x. And uh, the inference, and we require two inferences. So first we can learn that x equals f of x. And then from that, we can plug in the solution for f of x into g of f of x, and we get uh, the last equal equation. So to illustrate how congruence closure uh, works from a, uh, say, high-level view, uh, every term has a, uh, is given a name. Uh, so the f of x is given the name fx, f underscore x, to signify that we treat it as a, uh, as a self-contained constant. Um, and now um, the equalities that, that are in originally introduced, the two equalities uh, create an equivalence class between uh, the three of the names. And uh, the fx name is not, uh, not yet uh, in, in, uh, in the same equivalence class. Uh, but uh, the, the, the the, the the task of applying a congruence closure uh, will will detect that x and g of f of x are both uh, arguments of f, and since they're equal in the same class, we also equate the the nodes representing f of x and and f g of x. So we get a new equivalence class, and uh, when we introduce uh, g of x. Uh, we imply, apply the same uh, closure. So, uh, so this, this uh, theory of characters replaced a theory where we have reduced it to pure bit vector reasoning. And, um, and, and on average, it, uh, it gave a 30% speed up over uh, string uh, benchmarks. Uh, so, so that's an example of a, say, in, a choice of encoding that uh, fits a domain. Um, so there's several selected research areas in the in in uh, uh, related to bit vectors and uninterpreted functions. Uh, the uh, one level of activities in word level local search and reducing bit vector reasoning to effectively uh, propositional reasoning, um, applying computer algebra, especially if your family name starts with K, apparently. Um, then. Uh, and, and there are uh, developments of, so big open problem is to solve multipliers efficiently. Uh, and 
uh, and, and there have been several exciting developments around this. Um, so now, uh, uh, giving a, a quick uh, overview of arithmetical solving. Uh, and I won't be able to go into any uh, details of, of this, but to give an idea of uh, what goes into uh, solving arithmetical formulas, it essentially follows a, a waterfall model where it first uh, solves for bounds of variables and then uses uh, linear programming relaxation uh, to solve for the bounds. Uh, it For combinations of theories, it's useful to uh, propagate equalities that can be inferred. And there's a challenge of how you infer equalities efficiently. Uh, now, when it comes to solving for integers, the several methods based on uh, uh, branch and bound and, and cuts in various forms. And then finally, when you have nonlinear multiplication, uh, you, you can apply a, a suite of different techniques. And uh, these techniques are developed based on, on, on several advances in the SMT community over the years. Uh, it, given that I uh, gave so uh, much emphasis on, on CDCLT integration, it's fair to, to note that uh, it's not the only way you can implement SMT solving. So the model constructing SAT uh, approach aims to uh, generalize the CDCL view uh, to say, instead of case splitting on, on propositional variables, you may as well case split on the values of the domain of discourse. Uh, and, and finally, saturation or uh, yes, saturation methods uh, are, uh, are, uh, are as, as legal uh, way, ways, but maybe has not uh, show, shown to be efficiently uh, useful for s and uh, I'll go over one exemplar of the NL SAT or the MC SAT approach in the context of nonlinear uh, polynomial arithmetic. And uh, the main idea is to gradually uh, develop solutions. So first we uh, assign a value to uh, the variable X. You have two real variables, X and Y. And suppose we guess uh, the value X equals a half. And there are uh, three constraints. Uh, of four, sorry, four constraints signified by the three blue lines and the one orange line. The, uh, the, uh, the constraints are, are feasible. They have a green feasible region, but if we choose X equals a half, uh, there's no Y that will hit that feasible region. And we can um, establish, we can prove that there's no Y given the fixed X by performing a, a local quantifier elimination on the set of constraints uh, that are relevant to showing that uh, X doesn't have a feasible extension. Uh, so the small core is, is the, gives a practical way of showing, showing that there's a conflicting, a no uh, conflicting clause, uh, that there's no extension of it. And then the quantifier elimination method in the Nonlinear cases, cylindric uh, algebraic uh, decomposition. Uh, now I'll go through uh, uh, programming as a few examples on programming with solvers. Uh, so first of all, you can, uh, the main way of, of using SMT solvers have been and, and remains just finding feasibility. So given a set of co uh, constraints, is there a satisfiable solution? Uh, you can also show that there's no solution um, and, and uh, solve over both uh, uninterpreted functions and reals. For more, uh, uh, say more, uh, to get, uh, it's also possible get, to get more uh, nuanced information out of solvers. And uh, the main uh, interfaces used here are to retrieve unsatisfiable cores, uh, even optimize uh, with respect to uh, objective functions. In this example is max set, so unweighted max sets. So you uh, 
assign a set of uh, soft constraints and then uh, look for solutions that um, violate the minimal set of soft constraints or uh, dually uh, uh, satisfy the maximal number of soft, con soft constraints. And in applications uh, related to configuration management, uh, they, uh, it's uh, useful to know uh, what consequences you have from certain uh, constraints. So if I assume A and C on the upper right side, uh, side the box, uh, I'm interested to learn uh, what assignments are, are implied among uh, some set of target literals. And uh, so consequence finding, uh, and here it's uh, consequence finding with the explanations. So we can give the set of antecedents for a certain consequence as output, um, give, gives a way of, of uh, doing configuration product ma management. And there's also a recurrent uh, wish list uh, specifically uh, uh, counting uh, as, as Kulbis, Emil's uh, talk went into detail uh, about. Uh, here is a um, example of uh, using the uh, capabilities of uh, SAT SMT in, in, um, in, in a tandem with uh, more, say, uh, advanced uh, users. Uh, although this example are uh, the simplest possible incarnations of those more advanced uses. Um, so to find uh, a maximal satisfying uh, subsets of a uh, set of assumptions, uh, you can start with a, a candidate model, uh, extract the uh, true uh, literals from that model, and then uh, from the literals that were not assigned true yet, you can uh, uh, then engage in a, in a secondary loop on the lower left side that uh, uh, tr attempts to add each lit unassigned, uh, li undecided literal to the partial uh, maximal satisfying solution. And uh, if it's possible to add it, uh, then, then, then you indeed add that literal and everything else that was assigned to true. Um, otherwise, uh, if it's not possible to add that literal, it's it's infeasible, and then uh, you can add it as a backbone. And, and this mechanism can be used now for enumerating unsatisfiable cores and satisfying subsets. And uh, there has been several recent developments in this, uh, including the... Uh, um, this uh, the stochastic case that uh, with the uh, meal and, and bendik uh, recently so to finish up uh, some active areas in smt uh, from from my uh, uh, narrow view uh, is uh, one is uh, developing uh, proof formats for smt uh, so um, so i'm developing a new core for for set 3 and and there i'm adapting uh, grub and drat from the SAT world, uh, but to properly support SMT requires several extensions. Uh, but uh, retaining the the, um, the 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 big value that you can uh, check proof trails uh, independently when, and with low overhead seems to be a big advantage. Uh, there are exciting uh, developments in doing local search and uh, integration with CTCL. And that's useful for um, max sat uh, and, and um, finding satisfying uh, solutions. Um, and we're looking at uh, going beyond array property fragments and, and so on. Uh, so that concludes the, uh, uh, the, the talk. So I think it's time for uh, questions. Uh, your mic is off. Oh, oh, thanks, Nikolai, for a nice talk. Uh, questions, please, anybody? Okay, um, I had a couple of questions, uh, Nikolai. So you mentioned um, this uh, string solver, in particular, the Unicode solver that you had, the character solver. Mm -hmm. And um, in your experiment, you did 
you compared uh, um, the uh, bit vector based solver versus the uh, congruence closure. And the bit vector based solver is surprisingly a bit faster, right? Relative to. No, no, it's, so it is about 30, 40% slower than average. Slower. Okay. That makes it's sense. Not uniformly, but, but yeah, so, so a. Uh, the the, um, the observation is that uh, by performing this eager bit blasting, when it's rarely uh, useful, is right. just amounts to pure overhead. Right. No, that makes sense. No. Yeah, yeah. So that's the clarification I wanted. Um, towards the end of your talk, you talked about programming um, with SMT. It was also in the title of your talk, and uh, uh, the first. Kind of thought that comes to mind is can can you use SMT solvers as a way to just write code? I mean, um, you did mention synthesis, uh, but can I just use it as part of a programming language and uh, maybe a runtime system? So has that been explored? Yes, of course it has been explored. So uh, Scala, um, so uh, a. a um, a version in in uh, in context of Scala was was developed. Um, yeah. Now uh, I, I believe also Z uh, three is used in in certain constraint logic uh, programming systems as well. But I guess so, 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 the, so the big the uh, I mean they they are. Um, it, it, it ends up being a question of what guarantees uh, you expect of your programming language. Uh, so in terms of uh, reproducibility or, or, or across uh, different variants. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, 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 uh, the, state, the, the solutions you get from a SAT solver uh, depends uh, heavily on what starting points you have. Right. Uh, so, it, uh, and, and whether you get a solution or not, the solution stability as well. And, and I think it's fair to say that uh, you can expect a SAT solver uh, to give unsat uh, fairly with, with fairly low uh, variance. Uh, but there's a higher variance between uh, satisfiable instances, both in time and then, of course, in, in what what and the, the instances themselves. And, and when a program, when you use the instances in a programming environment, uh, there's a question of uh, whether you're going, uh, whether you expect the same answers under uh, slight perturb perturbations. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, basically cracking the knot on uh, making uh, solver calls uh, stable under satisfying assignments is is a uh, long running challenge in the context of, I think both uh, SMT and and an extension and and SAT in in cases. Um, so, uh, what what uh, what I'm trying these days is to uh, learn from uh, what the, the SAT world in in terms of fixing the phase of of variables. Uh, during uh, certain um, stages of search to um, skew the CDCL towards uh, basically what a local search engine does. So this is the, the second bullet on the slide. Um, but, but otherwise solution stability uh, also depend, ha has a, a heavy theory angle. It depends what theories you're- Of course, yeah. And, and whether you have good solvers. Uh, so, so the string solver, for example, is notoriously unstable. Right. Um, have, you, have you been using machine learning methods inside Z3 in recent uh, years? Oh, uh, so uh, I wouldn't say inside. So, so we have uh, done one, one um, use of, of machine learning for um, for, for prioritizing, uh, so priming the, the variable activity stacks of the uh, CDCL. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, and there's the question of uh, when, when do you invoke the, the, the queries to the machine learning module? 
and how do you train the machine mo- uh, learning? And um, so uh, Kuldeep and, and Matt uh, did for for uh, garbage collection, right? So in, right. And, and for uh, variable selection. Yeah. And, you and could use, you could also use online methods as opposed to uh, offline training. Um, yeah, so we, we, we so, so I, I, I have a mode where CPH or CHP is used, is, is available. Okay. And, and there's a user who likes it. So <laughs> there, there's, a, there, there's one of the users who uh, uh, uses all, uh, all, all the randomly uh, parameter settings we expose. And he, he says that it's uh, useful for, for some class of networks. Um, any additional questions? Anybody? Okay, so if not, thank you, Nikolai, for a great talk. And our next session will start in about five minutes. So uh, this is a talk by Ruzicha and her postdoc. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Is it Inan? Inan Shai, but Inan his Shai. former postdoc, he's now rock star at Alibaba Research. I see. Yeah. All right, so let's meet around uh, 1.30 p.m. Uh, EST, thank you.